So today we are looking at the HDX 68 shotgun from Umarex. Probably the paintball product I've been looking forward to for quite some time. I think probably the HDR 50 Cal Revolver was my favourite um, product of recent times. Um, and Numerex pulled out of the bag again and they've come up with this on the box. It says home defense extreme. Depends where you are in the world, whether you can use it for home defense. If you're in the UK like us, then it's a no-no. And we're strictly looking at this from a paintball playing perspective. You know, we are reviewing paintball products. So this is what, is, does it work in that scenario? Is it gonna work on a paintball field? Um, is it just gonna be good fun to if you've got a bit of space to use and shoot in your garden. Inside the box, very crumpled instruction manual and not much else. Just the HDX, but look at that. That, strange thing to say, is a thing of beauty. Sometimes you can just get something in your hand and it just feels like quality. And you know, I'm looking at this and you know, hardly a mark on it, just looks great. Aluminium body, polymer handguard. I think the rail, no, the, the rails, rails polymer, polymer AR grip. And we've got this here. So let's just take a quick look at it. So at the business end where the ball leaves, this has got like a lethal <laughs> looking muzzle on it. And this is removable. So that does come off. And we think the threads on this are 7 8 But what we found is that it's got a really, really deep thread. So if you do get a 7 8 muzzle, like something that Lapco have made, or there's others out there, then you tend to find it only comes three quarters full. So if you wanted to change the muzzle, you can, but you tend to find that it kind of looks a little bit unfinished. So probably best just to leave that on there. You've got sling mounts here, here, and here, which is good because it's quite a heavy beast. So this is a, a three kilogram gun. It's almost three foot in length, a couple of inches short of three foot. So it, it falls into the uh, rifle bracket. So it means that you can have used the 16 dual version in the UK. You know, if you're other places in the world you may only be able to use a 7.5 you know so f stamp for germany there is a more powerful version i think up to 40 joules where you can use that in the world i don't know but let us know in the comments you get these quite nice um fiber optic sight at the front so quite nice sights easily replaced thumb screw on the back put a red, red dot on there so standard 20 mil rail so most scopes will fit on there and um, you've got a small plastic Pickney rail at the bottom. I don't know, maybe you could fit a grip in there, make the pump action a little bit nicer, I don't know. And in here is um, your spring and your follower, and that's where the, the balls are loaded. So I'm just gonna fire that shot, that, so I can release that and open up and show you the breech. Inside the breech, this orange part here, that is the follower, and that's where you load it from. So let's load it up. So we've got a, in the bottom of the grip, we've got a plastic ramp that helps make loading a lot, lot easier. That just fits into place like that. And then just push and load and the ball catch clicks in place. It doesn't allow them to come up until that pump has been activated. 15, 16, hooray! That comes out. That goes back in there. There is a right way and a wrong way. I'll let you work that out. So that's it loaded and it's powered with CO2. And there you find that in the back end of the gun. So that comes off. If you find that's tight, this little guide, stock guide, is really handy for 
loosening or tighten. This takes two 12 grams. So one goes in with the piercing end that way, and then it's back to back, one goes in that way. So you've got a piercer at that end and a piercer at that end. Tighten that up. Stock goes back on. You just bump this end to activate, to pierce them. And then your little red indicator comes up. You know it's charged, you know it's good to go. And with two 12 grams in there, you get around about 40 shots, which is pretty good. It's fast, I'd say that's pretty good efficiency. Um, we've got pistols, 0.68 pistols out there that you struggle to get 15, 16 shots off one 12 grams. So 40 effective shots of two 12 grams is pretty good. We can take the push button safety off just there. That's ready to fire. So we're just about to shoot this, but before we do, if you've enjoyed this video, if you could give us some encouragement and give us a thumbs up, and if you want to see more like this, if you could subscribe and hit that notifications, that would be great. So let's see what this can do. So as you can see, we've got two HDXs on the table at the moment. These are both 7 point, or they were bought as a 7.5 versions because we couldn't get hold of the 16 joules like everybody else. We can't get hold of them. It's supposed to be released in the next few weeks. But so what we did is this one at the bottom here. We opened it up and we took out the restrictor, which is that, which sits in the valve similar to the HDS 68. Now, we're in the UK, so we can do that. That's not gonna put it up over that 12 pound, 12 pound foot limit uh, for an air weapon. Um, cause this is because of the length of it, this is considered an air rifle. So we put them both over the chrono, and I suppose, yeah, I mean, slightly disappointing. This was shooting around between 170, around about the 170 mark, which, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not great, you know. At, at that, I mean, it was hitting the target. It was hitting the target at about fifty feet away, but there wasn't a huge amount of in, enjoyment. It was, <laughs> it was taking, it was taking a lot longer to travel and hit the target than this, um, which was shooting at around about three forty on average. Um, three forty. What I would say, what we did take out, we took out. When we originally shot it, we took out the restrictor and the throttle, which is a little um, brass piece that sits in the in the air pipe that goes from your from your air source to your valve. And then there was a few shots that were, you know, a little bit spicy. What we found really, what we tended to find really, is that is just that the consistency was all over the place. So you one shot, you'd have a you know 20 fps drop. 20 FPS drop, 20 FPS drop, 20 FPS drop. And it just went through the CO2 really, really quickly. If you are planning on getting a 7.5 because you can't wait for the 16 and taking out the restrictor, then make sure you don't take out the throttle. Otherwise you'll just have a, a wildly inconsistent, overpowered, underpowered, depending on how much CO2 you've got left, paintball shotgun. But yeah, this was just, this was just cracking to shoot you know, at, at that sort of FPS. So it's not going to be ideal for playing paintball, you know. That you don't really want to be shooting people upwards of 300 FPS. Most paintball sites are 280. But there's a few things you can do um, to bring it down. Uh, we found that you don't, because it takes two 12 gram CO2s, if you put one empty one in and one full one in, you tend to find that it's, it, this, uh, it's firing at, at less uh, FPS than if you have you have two fresh CO2s in there. So you can do that. And we're fully expecting there to be many, many accessories for these. One that I would have thought would probably be on the horizon. Some clever bod out there um, will make a, an HPA adapter so you can have a, a refillable paintball tank on the back of it, which would be great. I think that would really, um, really open it up to be playing in the paintball world. And with the, with a, you know, an air HPA tank with a regulator, 
you can you can make adjustments to that so you could have it at 500 600 psi psi output which should still power this but won't won't take it up and above 300 fps so i would definitely say 16 if you can if it's legal for you to own the 16 joule version 16 joule version is definitely the way to go if you can't wait for the 16 joule version then you can get the 7.5 and you can take out the restrictor takes about an hour there's a lot of parts it's not hugely complicated there is a lot of parts but it's it's fairly straightforward as long as you're doing it somewhere clean and tidy and yeah you're not you're not dropping bits on the floor uh, you should be fine we shot paint through both i actually found that the and I, I don't know if this is to do with the power or 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 whether it's just slightly different mechanics in the gun i actually found that shooting paintballs in the higher powered version i had less brakes than shooting in the lower power version it ne neither neither worked brilliantly with the graffiti paintballs we were shooting it is it is the middle of winter it is cold cold and paintballs don't go that well together so we used these to test over the chrono we were using also a virtue clock one of these to test the fps and we were using these which are just they're just a plastic shell and they're just full of an inert powder um, and they're around about 0.68 cal just over three grams each they shot those really really well um, hitting the target at 50 feet on both that for me is a winner 7.5 version with a restrictor taken out gives you the 16 dual version um, cracking shooting looking paintball gun much fun was had shooting this